having good skills helps you go places, helps you get out there and enjoy and explore the world. Hi, I'm Stuart. I'm the founder of Freedom Wheelchair Skills. Freedom Wheelchair Skills offers peer-led training of everyday skills so people can get the most out of life whilst using a wheelchair. Each training session with Freedom Wheelchair Skills is bespoke to that client. Before a training session is confirmed, I go through a series of questions with a client to work out their individual needs, goals and abilities. And this information helps me plan a training session bespoke to them to maximise the time spent training. Here's some feedback from some previous clients. I have a spinal cord injury at level T12 to L3. Um, I've just had a, well, my very first wheelchair skills training with Stuart. I really enjoyed it. I think a lot of the stuff that I learned is practical things that I'm going to be using every day or need to use every day. I've, I've shown his disease and the lumbar region on the back. Been great today. I've got a lot out of it. I've learnt new tricks, some more confidence. Uh, I have MS and I also have a neck injury and arthritis. And today, uh, I've only really been using th this particular wheelchair for a couple of weeks, um, but I have been a wheelchair user for many years. However, this is right, really, really trying to work on my self-propel skills. And today was uh, really brilliant from the point of view that Stuart was there and was able to watch what I was doing and actually help me with adjustments of how to get, get up curves and things like that. So yeah, it was really, really valuable. I would recommend that everyone goes on it if they're using a wheelchair, certainly if you're trying to self-propel. Um, and it gives you that feeling of independence of yes I can do this without having to ask someone else to help me all the time. So from that point of view, really definitely worth worth it every penny. So yeah, great. Uh, I'm a T3 complete. Yeah, so today we've done an out and about with Freedom Wheelchair Skills with Stuart. It's been really good because I've actually done it in the home environment where I'm used to uh, living and we've gone up and down curbs through the park around uh, but it's perfect conditions for, for testing and just trying my ability. Today I got independence and feeling far more capable than when I arrived and I thought that I was quite capable anyway but I feel loads more capable now. Even just the slightest things that you show me, like the banana move, you know, holding a cup, that's made me feel far more capable and not like I'm stumbling along things. And it was the back wheel balancing that I really wanted to get today. And I've got it and it's great. <laughs> so thank you very much. Really good session, really enjoyed it. Each time you use your wheelchair is a different scenario. Having good skills to be able to manage those environmental challenges makes all the difference on the journey. Taking on curbs, door thresholds and other environmental challenges with confidence makes getting around a lot easier. Battling against the camber on the path or in the road can be difficult sometimes. Here's a clip pushing along Worthing Seafront and you can see the left hand is doing less work than the right hand. Freedom wheelchair skills isn't just about wheelchair skills training, but peer support as well. Tip for getting um, 
cups out of the cupboard that you can't reach, wooden spoon, in the handle, easy job. Multiple sclerosis and the skills that I've learned today is how to get about in a wheelchair, get up and down curbs, how to move about basically and get a bit of freedom from the illness that I've got. I'm a T10 complete paraplegic. Um, I've been in my wheelchair for five years and I've finally done some wheelchair skills with Stuart and it's been excellent. I've learned a wide range of skills, I'm going to be able to be far more independent um, and it's been a fantastic afternoon. Uh, I feel much more confident using my chair and I feel safer doing some new things and I'm looking forward to using the new skills, getting on and off a bus without help and using the underground more, getting over the gaps into carriages so I've got more confidence to do more things. Um, going up the curbs, learn how to get up the curbs, a lot more fluid than what I do at the moment. Um, the uh, going in and out of the cones, you know, treating them as like objects on the floor and making sure that I'm not looking at them but also glancing down occasionally. Um, God, there's so much that we did today that I'm trying to remember. Um, we're going to be looking at um, going down steps as well and um, yeah we've done the curbs going down the curbs on the back wheel balance down the ramps back wheel balance and uh, yeah lots absolute lots yeah re really worth it. I wanted to say that uh, that Stuart was very very encouraging very positive and that that is great and kept supporting me all the way through and uh, yeah it made me feel that I could do it that was great feeling. <laughs> Taking on drop curbs with ease it helps improve the ride and even using a good skill to get over the blister pads makes all the difference. Just going to bring Stuart on for us. And if you could pop your mic on, then we can be up to hear you. Great, thanks, Kat. Fantastic. Thanks ever so much for joining us, Stuart. Um, so we're going to start with questions. Okay, so do I need to bring someone with me to the training sessions? Yeah, unfortunately, due to insurance purposes, um, and there's some of the skills get more, um, should we say, adventurous. Uh, uh, someone has to come with an able-bodied person just to, there to, to prevent any injury happening to them um, and I'll give full training to the spotter as well so they don't get hurt as well because if they're taking someone's, if they're supporting someone not to, not to fall 
and they can, you know, there's risk of them getting injured, but I'll give the full training um, so they don't get hurt as well. So, yeah. Yeah, of course. Fantastic. Um, and where do the training sessions take place? And if you do travel to people for them, how far do you travel? Yeah, I, I've got a local hall in South Buckinghamshire that I, I hire. It's a 250 year old church hall. So it's got um, some, it's been made up to the Disabled Discrimination Act um, compliance. So it's got access to the disabled toilet and that, but it's still got some of its original features, which work really well for the training. Um, so if people can't, but sorry, if people can't make it to me, I could travel to them. Um, but then sometimes we have to negotiate a training venue if their home or garden isn't suitable. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd go anywhere if needed um, to, to help that person to, to teach that person those vital skills. It's amazing. Thanks, Stuart. Um, we've got a comment through from Paul. He says, oh, wow, some of these manoeuvres were amazing, especially backwards down the steps. How many years did it take you to get to that level, Stuart? Uh, a lot. So it, it was, um, yeah, what, I, 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 I used to try it and fail, and I failed a lot um, over the years. And then I sort of sat down and really worked out why I was, why I was making mistakes and and working it out and then after some careful help from friends and support of a and working with a spinal injuries charity we sort of mastered the technique but each time it's different and each time I'm still learning each scenario is different whether it's different weather conditions and stuff but yeah you know I, to master it never but to be good at it just repeat repeated attempts you know absolutely so who can you teach? Is there anybody that you can't really teach these skills to? Um, depending on obviously individual um, needs and you know how severe someone's disability is. But I would do an assessment call with an individual um, prior to the training and we really discuss their needs, goals and abilities. And then if they, depending on you know, how severe their, their needs are, we would come to a mutual decision whether it'd be possible to teach. But basically, if someone can propel a manual wheelchair, I can show them individual skills how to use it better. But then it's also how to be assisted and ask for help to make sure that help's done correctly so they don't get hurt as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so does it matter what type of wheelchair that somebody has? Not really, no, not, it doesn't matter. It, it, a manual wheelchair um, is what I really I, ideally teach, but I've got some experience with power chairs. I, 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 I don't use one, so I can't, I don't know firsthand what each one's like, um, but if someone, I have supported people with power chairs, I'll quite often signpost them to other organisations and people that can help. But as for manual chairs, it doesn't, doesn't matter whether it's a lightweight active chair or just an everyday chair that they've been supplied. Right, okay. And this next question, I'm imagining it's going to very much depend on the individual's needs and how quickly they pick it up, but mm. how long does each session last and how many sessions will somebody need? That's a great question. I, I Ideally, I like to allow three hours for a session because that gives enough time for um, demonstrations, practice and questions on, on each skill. Um, and when I've done the assessment call first, you know, that helps me tailor the, the, the session for them. So if I think they need to spend longer on a particular skill um, or if one skill is not going to be practical at all, then I know I can just sort of not, not worry about allowing time for it. Um, and then if when the individ individual's gone away, it's up to them to practice because obviously it doesn't, it's not just going to, master the skill in in just a few hours and then if they want to come back to learn the skills they're quite welcome to um but yeah I, I i like to i like to allow three hours for a session and if i'm honest i'm not a skin flint for time you know if we run over slightly i'm not it doesn't um yeah. worry me as long as i haven't got to get rushed back to do the school run um, <laughs> yeah. the boy up is it's all right you know fantastic okay and are you insured yeah, fully insured for public liability and public indemnity insurance. Um, when I started with Freedom Wheelchair Skills, 
Um, I've, I wanted to make sure it was done properly and professionally. So all angles have to be covered because um, we're in a, I hate to say it, in a society now where, where things need to be covered and stuff, you know, but to date, um, everything's been safe and secure. And now with my COVID um, risk assessments before each session as well, make sure everybody stays safe. Um, that's just added on onto the onto the safety side of the of the training. Yeah, of course. So you mentioned a spotter a little bit earlier. For anybody that doesn't know, can you explain what a spotter is? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I was a bit. Yeah, I was, I was so used to using that word. <laughs> um, a spotter would be uh, a, a, someone, an able-bodied person, um, that would come along just to prevent the person tipping out the back of the chair, and I'll supply a strap that goes on the back of the chair. And, and then that spotter would, would, would hold the other end. And then if the user was to tip back when we're practicing raising the front casters up from the ground, um, if they overbalance, then the spotter's there just to catch their weight. Um, and then I turn ways to prevent that happening. But also if it does happen, which, which you know, is sometimes quite um, likely to happen, they, they'll show them ways to help the user get them back up straight as well, so there's less less strain on either party, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, yeah, so it's just someone there for, for safety reasons. Okay, and do you teach transfers as well as these manoeuvres and skills? Transfers can be quite tricky. Yeah, it's an interesting question because everybody, everybody, every disability is slightly different. I you know I'm T4 paraplegic, but my mate who's T4 paraplegic, we both got totally different symptoms and do different transfers you know so but what I I would do is I would I can demonstrate my technique for doing transfers and give the the, the client or the user advice or tips on how to do it. but I'm not an occupational therapist I'm not a physiotherapist I've just got 20 plus years of doing things my way and the ways I was shown or taught in hospital a long time ago and I'll tweak those ways to make them more usable for me um, and then you know if someone and it's the same for a user a client if they need some support in that I can show them but I can't I wouldn't say I wouldn't want them to think I'm teaching them in case they yes um because it's, it's so difficult because everybody's so different you know yeah along the same lines is um are you able to offer advice on chair configuration or is that not your area of expertise yeah i i not not so much on chair configuration but i would give advice on how the chair may be set up a little bit better um again because i'm not a physio or occupational therapist mm -hmm. because of my you know my, my background isn't like that but um you know if people some people get a wheelchair that I can see that's you know maybe not quite right. The wheels could be adjusted. No, yeah, I would give advice on that, but I wouldn't say definitely what it needed doing. Okay. Um, and if somebody travels to you, what do they need to bring with you with them to these sessions? Lunch, uh, <laughs> a drink, and refreshments, and and like an ad person gloves. Um, because if some of it, if some of the training is outside to make it more realistic, a coat um, in case, because it's, you know, great British weather, you can't guarantee it's going to stay dry. Um, but yeah, and, and lunch, there's no facilities, there's no catering facilities at the, at the hall or higher. So yeah, they, and then um, just a good, good attitude towards practicing and, and doing the skills. Yeah, fantastic. So if somebody's watching now and they think, OK, this sounds like something that might be helpful for yeah. me, would the first step be to get in touch with you and maybe there'd be an assessment as the next step? Would that be the case? Yeah, if, uh, yeah. first get in contact, I'll drop me an email, give me a call, send me a text. And then um, yeah, we, we would open discussions just to see what they wanted to learn, what what their needs are and their abilities. And then, you know, if they've got time, you know, they're assessment question I like to leave 30 to 40 minutes for because it's not just me running off a load of questions to them but it's I like to do it as more of a chat so then they get to know me as well and I get to know them so then on the day of training we haven't got to spend first you know few minutes as introductions going yeah. on to it and asking me, uh, they've already got to know me my personality 
uh, a little bit and I've got to know them. So then it's, it's, it's uh, easy just to kick off with the training. Okay, that's fantastic. Thanks ever so much, Stuart. Um, so anybody that wants to find out more about Freedom Wheelchair Skills, they are hyperlinked in your show guides, but they also have a little stand in our charities and services zone. So in the main entrance, if you go back there and you click on the entrance on the right that says charities and services, you'll be able to go in, find out a bit more information about wheelchair skill, freedom wheelchair skills, and there's the contact details there. Um, anything that you wanted to add before we move on, Stuart? Uh, yeah, yeah apologise for some of the sound quality on my video and stuff. I, I, I'm not an IT expert. I, you know, so yeah, just just uh, sorry about that. To be any, anybody want any other testimonials or or video um, uh, written or video testimonials, they're all available on my website from some of the past clients that were in my in the presentation and other other people as well. So yeah, please feel free to have a look. Fantastic! Thanks ever so much, Stuart. We really appreciate you coming on and chatting to us. No problem. Thanks very much. Thanks, Stuart. Bye. Have a good weekend.